All right, next up, let's watch BSJ's video on a new carry that even Valve does not group as a carry. He might take some flack for this, but I think he's onto something. I briefly watched the start of this, and uh, well, some of you may know what's about to happen. You can kind of see it already. He's going to tell us why Dragon Knight is a valid carry. And I got to say, I have watched him play some Dragon Knight carry on stream. It looks really good. But he was a little frustrated that his team didn't understand how to play with it. So that might be part of the challenge. I have a couple of games of DK, but never as carry yet, I don't think. So let's see if we can uh, make it work. Next up, my second favorite hero of the patch has been carry DK. A lot of people have been shitting on DK as a hero, and I am imploring you guys to try this build because it is absolutely broken but it has never been played like this before and i i'm not saying this as like a youtube pitch i literally think i don't know what i would do if the opponent dk did this well okay i actually don't know how to counter this shit so what the idea is is that dk in the past was a blink stunner he was a off laner a mid laner a guy that played around tower sieging and stunning now, let me tell you, let's just forget everything we think we know about DK and listen up. Over the years, he has had movement speed buff creep out the wazoo. He is now a 315 base movement speed hero. He used to be very slow, making him need a blink dagger to get around the map and team fights. Also, he used to be a blink stun. Look at his stun duration in the recent patch. It got nerfed pretty hard, guys. Level 1's down 0.45 seconds. The final level's down 0.6. That's a lot of time on a hero that relied on his stun. But what has been buffed is Breathe Fire now applies the Elder Dragon form ability. That's actually a really powerful farming tool in the early game because it makes it so your single target spell damage from your ulti now applies on all the creeps and the heroes. And also, over time, his Dragon Blood has been buffed. And his ultimate has been buffed a few times too. So on top of this, they also gave him 1.6 base attack time instead of 1.7. So he just attacks. So I haven't been part of all those buffs, but I've seen the base attack speed buff. And I knew that DK, I liked him during the A to C because he's simple. And I think he's going to be pretty simple to learn now as well. But we haven't seen a whole lot of him. He was generally played as an off lane, someone who sits in the lane and will eventually kill the tower. He did good damage. He was very tanky, but he was nothing special. But... BSJ comes up with a way to utilize his strengths to help his team. Watch the rest. Faster. So this hero, in my opinion, is a carry. So what makes him so strong as a carry is that you're dealing with a lot of Vanguard offlaners, a lot of heroes that are looking to click you down, like Techies in the four position, Bounty Hunter. Like, they're trying to harass you at a lane. So the idea behind DK is he's actually pretty freaking useless in lane. Spoiler alert, do not level your stun unless you absolutely have to to get a kill at like level 2. But otherwise, your stun, dodge it, spell in the laning phase. As a carry player, it doesn't help you do anything that you want to be doing. What this hero can do, make sure your support knows this, is he needs you to have a pull camp to support. And just let him be. Literally, like you can play the first like level or two like the lane is normal. And afterwards, DK is the most self-sustaining but useless to you carry. Now you may say, BSA, why are you trying to sell me on a broken hero that is useless? The answer is they can't do anything to you. I've only lost one lane out of the six that I've played. I still won that game. And the only reason that this hero struggles in the early game is that he feels like he always leave lane on five. Am I right? Has to do something. He feels like he has to make towers die. He has to force the issue because he doesn't flash farm until level 12, where his ultimate gives him splash damage. And he also just lacks flash farm, right? So what do we do? We go bracer, stick, maybe a wand, straight freaking Midas, baby. And I, people can't do anything about it, guys. I am telling you that people can't do anything about it. And look at my skill build. What ends up happening is you can spam breathe fire. because Dude, really? Look at this. He's got a 630 Midas. Can we do that? <laughs> it does 30% damage. Yeah, so it's the same idea as with Vanguard Anti-Mage, Vanguard Ursa. Have a chunky AF plus one that can't be kicked out of lane without massive commitment. Exactly. Needs four or five people. Introduction. Yeah, he doesn't even have boots. Because he's just going to sit there anyway. And at level two, it secures literally every range creep. So at level three, if you're having a really good lane, you take second point Breathe Fire. If you're getting a little bit more harassed, you take the second point in your passive. Just to make sure you don't get booted out of lane. And uh, how much regen is his passive? Harass, you take the second point in your passive. Look at this. His level one dragon blood 
is the value of a ring of health. Ring of health is 4.25. He gets that at level 1. And he gets 4 armor from it. That's crazy. Even level 1 is really good. Take 2 points in E. Just to make sure you don't get booted out of lane. 46 CS and 630 is pretty bonkers. Maybe he did small camp pulls. Yeah. Yeah, it is bonkers. He had a pro support as well. And you can see here that I just naked rushed the Midas. I'm telling you, this hero doesn't do anything if he goes other items, and he doesn't get anything done to him. Does anyone know why BSJ streams are at a weird time now? Well, he lives in the Netherlands, and he's not a de degenerate like me. He actually wakes up in the AM. If he goes Midas. So you go Midas, and then what happens is this allows you to do the normal carry farming pattern of between lane and jungle. And if the opponent off laner leaves, the beauty of it is you can actually apply a lot of pressure to the tower with just your ultimate and a Midas, but we're not even prioritizing the tower that much. And the best part about this build is that you just push out the lane. See you later, nerds. Like you don't even worry about the off laner, just push it out. And you may say, BSJ, you're winning by 3K, but this has been every single game of DK where I say, hey, support. Leave me alone, go mess with the mid laner. They're pressuring mid, they take the mid tower. I'm doing my own thing on this island down here. And I just go 402. Like I literally just max out, breathe fire. What is BSJ doing in our wonderful country of the Netherlands? Is it a woman? He works here. He works for Team Liquid and Team Liquid has their office here. So he lives there for his work. It's 320 damage when my ultimate's on, it applies my damage over time to everything. And you actually farm pretty fast. Now, where do we go from here? Mid to late game, the first item that you go after the Midas is treads. After the treads, you go Manta. Now BSJ, why Manta? I don't understand DK, why do you insist on buying Manta on this hero? I want you guys to realize that DK is a normal hero in the laning phase, but later he's literally Terrorblader Naga, okay? Like that is literally what he is because his illusions benefit from all of the perks of his ultimate. They become ranged, they... So you're kind of rushing for level 18. The Midas is instrumental in reaching level 18. It's becoming putting more greed into something that already has buffers of survivability and safety. You just want to get more out of it. They do damage over time. They do splash. They clear creep waves. They do damage to towers. So like you can actually use your illusions to pressure towers and you can use them to push waves and protect yourself. And I'm just spamming my ulti off cooldown. And so the reason why the Manta is so important is that it just accelerates our ability to run around the map. We have lower base attack times so it benefits us even more. And then after the Manta, we go straight into Octarine Core, okay? <laughs> Octarine Core, we have a Midas. We have an ultimate with a 40 second downtime. Now it's only 15 second downtime. We have Brief Fire, we have a stun, we have a Manta. It just makes sense, people. Octarine Core is still freaking broken as an item, and it's even better on DK than it was in the past because, like, yeah, the cash range was nice on a stun, but that's about it. After the Octarine Core, let's keep in mind the playstyle, right? So the playstyle of DK is that you just don't interact with the opponent at all. I know yeah. that sounds... I love it. <laughs> super boring, but what I'm saying is they have to fight into you. They have to, like, four-man, five-man smoke gank you. Otherwise, you just don't care. So do not feel forced to take objectives. I want to remind you guys... I don't see how this is going to go wrong at all in my pubs. Not interacting with the opponent at all, quote-unquote, for 25 minutes. That's going to be just fine. Guys, that I have Aegis here and that, or I want to bring attention to the fact that I have Aegis and we're sieging. I don't quite have Ags and I feel like, you know, we're really powerful. We're up by 11k, but this is not what DK actually does. I know this looks strange, but we just don't have to do this at all. Like we don't have to do what we're about to do here. We get this fort, we should just back. This is the- Then what do we do instead? Look at the map. They are up. They still have a tier one mid tower. They have the tier twos. They've killed all the tier twos. They have Aegis. They're high grounding. One enemy is dead. They have almost all their ults available. Enemy just glyphed and it's 5v4. They're up 12k net worth and he, has a, uh, he had an active ult but no longer has, but he has it in 12. Why wouldn't you stay? Like how, how, how do you recognize not to stay? I know, I know he doesn't have ult yet, but like it seems fine to be honest to stay here. The one thing we have to be careful of is your ultimate being on the 15 second downtime and a fight breaking out. Do not allow this to happen. I have made this mistake. You have to communicate to your team, hey guys, there is a 15 second window that we cannot fight, okay? And other than that, we're a freaking god, okay? So what happens is 
We end up taking a fight during this 15 second window, and we die. Now that is something that I have had happen to me several times at DK, and I'm telling you, if you avoid this, it is smooth sailing for the rest of the game. Why do we go Octarine before the Ags, by the way? Because the Ags doesn't really do much until you're level 18, because that's when you get the big black dragon. So mm. notice how in my build, I finished the Ags right now, and I hit level 18 at the exact same time. So that's the big part about this build is the timings all line up where farm, farm, farm. So I think if you're like very slow at getting your net worth, like you had a terrible game and you cannot fit in Octarine before reaching level 18, then I think you just get the Aghanim Scepter first at level 18, then Octarine, I would imagine. Farm, 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 get Ags, level 18, end game. The now, you guys may ask, why is DK such a hard carry? This hero with Ags... Is Hoodwink going to get in current state? She's actually a little underpowered right now. Uh, she's she's sporting like a 43% win rate or something last time I checked. Hoodwink. Gets 25% magic resistance. The slow is now 60%. The movement speed slow. So he has like a built-in Scotty. Doesn't pierce BKB, but it's built-in. Splash damage. So like a built-in battle fairy. And does damage to towers. And with level 20, as 150 Elder Range Dragon uh, attack range, he now has 650 attack range. So he is now a Naga that slows people when they hit them with the hero <laughs> and the illusions, and kills buildings, and has free pathing, and has 650 range. I hope so I'm selling you guys on this right now. So this is what I mean by not having to force objectives. He's just trying to convince everyone that it's valid so that he can keep playing it because he thinks it's fun. He's trying to make people believe in it so they stop flaming him or playing stupid because they don't believe in the build. <laughs> Notice how in this case, I am just using Manta Illusions to make them go back to base. Because these Manta Illusions with the big black dragon, they will kill this tier 3. It just dies to the damage over time. So you can tell your team, like, you don't have to fight at all. The opponent eventually has to respond. They have to do this. They literally have to respond to your illusions. And you can make sure you send them at the range racks because that is unhealable damage. Now, there is a bug currently right now. Don't tell Gaben. That when your illusions were spawned with your ultimate and they turn back into regular hero because the ultimate timed out, the illusions will still do damage over time. And they will still slow. They won't do Ooh. AoE, but they will still slow. So notice how this illusion that's no longer an ult form is still ticking damage to the racks. Nice. So, Let's abuse you it. You can just keep this up for all of eternity. Usually after this build or after these items, I like to go Silver Edge because it's like a blink dagger that has lower cooldown for him, meaning like you, you do lower the cooldown of Silver Edge. It has a higher cooldown than blink dagger, but it does damage for you, right? It's damage and attack speed. So it's just a nice way to get around the map. Uh, doesn't feel like he super sold me on why Silver Edge is correct here, but like, yeah, okay, it's a, it's a blink, it's a worse blink dagger that does more damage. And he wants more damage because he's already survivable enough and he's kind of like this moving turret. So he doesn't need to blink on top of people because like stun initiation is not what a carry does. That kind of makes sense, I think. And yeah. position. It offers crits. And then with Octarine, you're pretty much always in this when you want to be, which is nice. In fights and because you have free pathing during ultimate you don't necessarily rely on like blinking over cliffs or anything you can just shadow blade and walk over them it's really hard to lock you down but notice it's the same it's the same play style i told my team they have to react guys do not chase after them do not force a fight you guys can just farm they have to react to my illusions they just have to right this is the part of dk that people don't see is like a hard carry because like even though it looks like cheesy there's absolutely nothing they can do about it. That illusion has 4,000 HP, 25% bonus magic resistance, and free pathing. So you can just keep doing this. And it's really hard to catch you because I'm just shadow blading through trees. It's insanely difficult to gank this hero. So you keep this up. And then now we're going to force a Roche because we forced reactions to base. So that's the entire idea of this build. So there have been throws. We lost an Aegis. They took an Aegis. I'm telling you guys, this game has been a real barn burner. And this game, my last item was actually a Lincoln Sphere to prevent the Morphling from morphing into me with his Ags. A barn burner? <laughs> I've never heard that before. Yeah, Skitter was playing this. And stealing all my stats, okay? Um, so that's why I have Lincolns in this specific game. So this last item can just be situational. It can be AC, Lincoln, Satanic. EKB if you absolutely need it. So I want to talk to you guys how to approach team fights, right? So in this case, what we want to do is we want to use our Manta and then send the illusions at the supports or the backliners in general, okay? So what you're going to notice here 
is that when the illusions get sent at the supports, like these are just hitting other people. Oh, okay. They simply don't move. They are slowed by 60% from your illusions. They simply do not move. Oh yeah. That Pugna had to BKB because he's getting hit by an illusion. Okay? And then people BKB to fight you. You're super freaking tanky. You can just man fight them because they had to buy BKB and you didn't. You take these really long fights similar to Naga and eventually they get worn down, people. They are slowed. They have to run away, but they can't. They can't bring you down because you're super tanky and you kite them. Like you don't have to man fight, right? The only reason I man fought the Murano was because he was the only guy there. But if they try to go on you, you can just kite them backwards because your Manta illusions slow them by 60%. Oh. And eventually you just wear them down and that's how you win. So don't become like too overconfident and just start going all the way to zero. You want to utilize your range, your slows, your Mantas and your cooldowns repeatedly while using your health regen. And yeah, if you die, you have no regen. Okay. Team fights, guys. These are my two heroes for 7.33C. I'm winning with them. I really think you guys can win with them too. Biggest note is that BKB is a shit item and these heroes don't have to buy it. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. All right, let's try it out. Let's see how it goes for us. Thanks, BSJ, for the great video. Hey, yo, what's up, guys? It's my first time playing Dragon Knight carry yes. in 4K plus MMR. This pleases me. Ranked. Who calls? I'm uh I just watched the video from Dragon Knight BSJ guide Bracers Magic Wand Midas and then Treads Manta Octarine The Dragon waits Supposedly <laughs> you can be very safe in lane and have your support go other places so that you can win elsewhere on the map while you're ungankable or almost unkillable. But whether I can make any of that come true remains to be seen. We'll do our best. The idea is you have a lot of regen and armor. You're hard to kill. It's not worth it. So you have the space to go Midas. You do not level stun, he said. And I'm just gonna obey that like a good Zoolander male model. You say jump, I jump. I ask how high. Three bounties. Good job staying alive. What is he saving money for? My heart support has 460 gold in the bank. Got himself a stick. We got first blood. Nice. So the idea is you ruin your own game if you pick stun. You are not easily able to kill people. So instead you use Q for farming. Hey, my bad, my bad. Compelled to battle. Why does he have quelling? Oh, he is the yes. he is the position three. I need no steam. Yes. <laughs> I need no steam. This is 80 damage. Yes. Soon you win. Oh. 80 damage. It's good to know. You can use that for the ranged creeps. Kind of have to get used to his uh, attack timing. Bastard. Oh, missed a lot of CS. Yeah, I'm uh, not that comfortable with his mechanics yet, and I did not warm up in try mode, but uh, okay. <clears throat> yes. 
That's pretty nice. Buy my blade. Dragon to the Who calls to Dragon Knight? I'll not your skull. I'm under attack. By the honor of the ancients. Our shields shall clash. I need no skin. Yes. Who is you want it? <laughs> My armor grows stronger. The dragon waits. Compel he has Ring of Health, so he's going Vanguard. It'll make him unkillable, but. Of course. Who calls the dragon? Ah, oh, shit. Compelled to battle. I need no steam. Onward. The dragon way too bad. So sad. Ah, <sighs> wasted mana. Oh, nice. Nice. I've killed dragons. Less deserved. Good boys. Of course. Dragon to the first. Dragon charge. More gold. Your middle tower is under attack. <laughs> Good job. I hate it. I, I love it when uh, bounties die. I need no Not on my watch. We cross enemy bounties. Thank you for the lotus. I should be fine now. Can rotate other place. Oh yeah. He was trying to steal rune. Swiftly. Attack. Dragon to the fray. My my blade. I need 
thirsty. Denied. Compelled to battle. Yeah, it's not a 6 minute 30 minus like BSJ, but... <laughs> of course, Bounty is stealing money too. 8 minutes 10, okay, acceptable. Bracelet. Yes. Not yet. The dragon waits. Mana is nice. We get threats. The dragon waits. You can go help bot, Wyvern. Yes. I'm safe. I need no skin. I need to store the void within. Dragon to the fray. Yes. Midas. Yes. Wait, catapult is coming, right? Yeah. Dragon to the fray. <laughs> That's the first time I hear his laugh. I'll melt this down for armor. Wembley cuts deep. So we can kill Tower now, or we can start hitting creeps uh, in the jungle. I think we just push this out. And uh, we're gonna hit creeps up there. Uh, let's see. Next is... Um, Yasha. Yes. A bubble from the void. What's the cooldown on this? 11 seconds. They're pushing bot, so I'll take the tower. Attack. 
troops. Yes. This ulti is very nice. And look at our regen, it's insane. The enemy's middle tower has fallen. Wow. Yeah, he was one kill away, I know. He's still low, he has no vanguard, he has Midas. My this lol. The enemy's top tower has fallen. We're three dead, so they could come for me. So now we have to decide Manta. Okay, I decided it's Manta. We don't have to decide. I think Q deals a lot of damage, it's really nice. I don't actually know what I should take here. I'll take damage. Since I'm playing carry. Okay, that makes sense. All right. <laughs> I think that makes sense. I was I I had vision. I knew they were closing in on me, but I have to test the limits of uh, what I can survive. If I have Manta, I live there. No Manta, no live. My bad. Stun level one, buddy. Always. Well, uh. I just watched the BSJ video on Dragon Knight, Johan Pavlovich. I just watched it. I'm just uh, following it. Dutifully. And uh, stun is not part of it. Because you farmed too slowly with it. Let's, let's use Midas first. Kind of cringe. I think that was a mistake, Blink. He didn't know I'm there. <laughs> Would have been nice if I got the kill, but uh, I don't mind if uh, Void gets it, if that helps him. Lol. <laughs> that Blink game was funny. What position was my patch, guys? Who calls the dragon knight? 
Four? Okay. Dude, sniper is freaking low. Yes. Compelled to battle. Then I have to walk all the way back. For the stupid creeps. So now we get Octarina. Yikes. Fighting without Elder Dragon form, which by the way, what does it give me? Splash attack, attack damage on raise, corrosive breath, corrosive breath, poison damage, works on structures. Movement speed, attack speed slow. Okay, so none of it saves you from getting Chronosphere. <laughs> yeah, Patch is doing really well. I, I was wrong to fight there. That was not learned from the BSJ video. Uh, so anyway, Octarine next. We can sell these, and we can get uh, point booster. Range would have saved you from Chrono. Yeah, I'd be in a better spot. So, don't fight with uh, with no Elder Dragon form, right? Oh, nice splash damage. Jeez, it's really good. Skywrath disconnected. Sounds good. To the fray. Dragon eye. 
Oh. Oh, I see. I thought they will transform alongside. Yoink. Dragon to the fray. Yes. The dragon is yes. The enemy's middle tower has fallen. Yes. Lol. Uh, I forgot what's next. Oh, Scepter. I should probably not be farming while my team is dying. By my should we hold ult until we level up? Yes. Okay. Dragon, dragon, dragon waits. Okay. Go. By the guide, S Scepter, Silver Edge, Lincolns. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Darkest Demon. Oh. Okay. Oh, 
Any uh, Chronosphere steals? Wow. 31 armor. I'm not even sure I should have taken it. I think I should have given it to uh, Void. Yes. 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 Dragon to the fray. Onward. Your tower is under attack. Gold wins wars. Anything that keeps me alive against the uh, faceless here. Passive scepter. Oops. Oh, yeah, the cooldown reduction. Oh. Big. Oh wait, I have flight now. I forgot. <laughs> I can fly. Radiant structures are fortified. Wow, it's very cool actually. This build. Of course I know they had a disconnect and an abandon. It sucks. But this is a perfect onboarding game for me. Oh, hell yeah. Attack range. Selling bracers and not Midas? I don't know if that's sussy. Feels a bit sussy. I should stop thinking in paths. Wow, the splash damage. The dragons. It's really nice. So you always have this 12 second cooldown of no Elder Dragon. That's where they can try to get you. That's a, that's so broken, Octarine. 12 seconds. 
of no elder dragon so you are basically the elder dragon now 72 second cooldown 60 second duration cool that's our first dragonite ranked victory and our first dragonite carry game and i know i know They had an abandon, it sucks. He's so slow. <laughs> Very nice. From our side. An acceptable laning phase when they were still there. They abandoned, they, they mad because they bad. It was a win, team was fantastic. And uh, we won, there we go. Yeah, DK not in dragon form can only take favorable fights, right? A win is a win. Yeah, supports were good. Lovely game. And both deaths were so stupid from my side, you know? I'm uh, I'm two deaths. They were so dumb. It was so avoidable. I was limit testing. I was limit testing. Oh, don't smell nothing. Yeah. Nice. We had a lot of building damage, which is another great thing when the carry can take care of building damage. And what's even better, you can do it from a distance. You can damage them from a distance with Manta and Dragon Form. Very cool. Yeah, we're learning the hero. Like, I'll show you my experience on him, right? So I played him in A to Z. This was when I was literally learning the game and I didn't even know how everything works. I probably played offlane. Judging by the draft, I have no freaking idea. Unranked games are wild, man. But I would say Soul Ring, probably offlane game. Klinks would have been position one. Uh, Kunka would probably be two. Wind Ranger would be like four and then stealing the core position and bounty five i have no idea dude it'd be funny to watch well i could i could still load it on youtube but okay <laughs> and they have an item seller nice so that was obviously not very meaningful that was in september so then in january I tried him out on offlane. I thought this hero is pretty simple. Let's try him out on offlane. Didn't go that well. Soul Ring, Lotus, Bracers, Blink. Oh yeah, Blink stun. And I tried that a lot. Every time I tried it, I died. Yeah, pretty rough. I did not really know how he works yet. The video from BSJ helped a lot, like to understand how he plays. Very cool.